Does your head hurt or do you have a fever? If so, you could take aspirin with good results, but this couldn't be a good idea if you have a history of allergy to salicylates, if you are taking anticoagulants, if you are pregnant, if you suffer from gastritis, or if you are under 16 years of age. You see, acetyl salicylic acid, also known as aspirin, the name of a commercial brand that came into common use, is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory that belongs to the family of salicylates, and it's one of the most widely used drugs in the world, with a consumption greater than 100 billion tablets per year. For more than 3,000 years, the Egyptians, Sumerians, and Chinese have used acetyl salicylic acid for medicinal purposes in the form of white willow bark, from which it's extracted. However, its first formal mention is found in texts of Hippocrates, the father of Greek medicine. The synthesis of acetyl salicylic acid is attributed to Frederick Gerhardt in France in 1853 and to Felix Hoffmann in Germany in 1894. It's currently used for pain, inflammation, and fever, and also in the prevention of heart attacks. Aspirin is used to relieve pain and inflammation in conditions such as headache, back and neck pain, common cold, menstrual cramps, migraine, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, sprains, dental pain, and muscle pain mainly. It's also effective for the treatment of fever, but it shouldn't be used in patients under 16 years of age with viral or bacterial infections due to the risk of Rice syndrome, a rare but serious liver and brain complication associated with the use of aspirin or other salicylates in children and adolescents with such infections. Due to its antiplatelet properties, that is, anticoagulants, aspirin is used under medical supervision to prevent a first non-fatal heart attack in people with risk factors, such as smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and inactive lifestyle and obesity, prevent a second heart attack or stroke, reduce the risk of a transient ischemic attack, and reduce the clotting properties of platelets in patients who have undergone certain surgery. However, in people who are not at risk for heart disease or stroke, aspirin offers little benefit as preventative drug. On the other hand, aspirin is thought to lower the overall risk of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer, but it's thought to take 10 to 20 years to assess this benefit, making it impractical for this purpose. Additionally, aspirin in combination with other drugs is also used for fever and joint pain symptoms in acute rheumatic fever, but after the fever and pain have subsided, the drug is no longer needed, as it doesn't reduce the incidence of cardiac complications or residual rheumatic heart disease. Other than rheumatic fever, Kawasaki disease remains one of the few indications for aspirin use in children, despite a lack of strong evidence of its effectiveness. The recommended doses of acetyl salicylic acid vary according to the disease and the patient, so the treating doctor will be the one who establishes its use and the corresponding doses. Self-medication is not recommended. Acetyl salicylic acid shouldn't be taken in cases of allergy to salicylates, active peptic ulcer, severe renal or hepatic insufficiency, severe congestive heart failure, asthma or bronchospasm precipitated by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, dengue due to increased bleeding tendency, children or adolescents to control cold or flu symptoms, hyperuricemia or gout, and pregnancy, since there's been an increased risk of miscarriages and certain congenital malformations in addition to the fact that it can cause premature closure of the fetal ductus arteriosus. The main adverse secondary reactions that could occur with the consumption of acetyl salicylic acid include pain in the pit of the stomach due to gastric irritation, nausea, ringing in the ears, vertigo, decreased hearing, reduction in the number of platelets, and kidney damage. In addition, this drug increases the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding in sensitive individuals, and enteric-coated formulations don't appear to reduce this risk. Now let's talk about acetaminophen. 
This, like casperin, is an over-the-counter drug, that is, it can be purchased without a prescription. Acetaminophen is also one of the best-selling products in the world for the relief of fever and pain, as well as being very cheap. It has only a minimal risk of undesirable side effects. Acetaminophen is indicated for the control of mild or moderate pain caused by headache, picking in the ears, joint disorders, dental discomfort, arthritis, neuralgia, and minor surgical procedures mainly. Now, the combination of acetaminophen with caffeine is superior to acetaminophen alone for treating common pain conditions. Caffeine also increases the analgesic effect of aspirin. Likewise, acetaminophen is effective for the treatment of fever, such as that caused by viral and bacterial infections after the applications of vaccines, etc. However, acetaminophen has minimal anti-inflammatory effect compared to aspirin, making it less effective than aspirin in reducing pain associated with inflammation and bodily injury. Acetaminophen is a first-line drug for pain and fever during pregnancy and is placed in risk category B by the Food and Drug Administration. Likewise, its use is reasonably safe in nursing mothers since it's excreted in breast milk in very small quantities. In some publications, it's mentioned that the consumption of acetaminophen during pregnancy increases the probability that the children will develop asthma or neurological problems such as difficulty in expression and hyperactivity. However, such studies indicate that the chances of any of these effects occurring in children are 30%, and that's when acetaminophen is taken for more than four continuous weeks during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. In contrast, other investigations indicate that the reference studies are not conclusive, since the aforementioned alterations could due to previous maternal diseases and not to acetaminophen. Therefore, if the person is not allergic to acetaminophen, it can be taken during pregnancy and lactation without any problem, for short periods. In such conditions, the ideal is not to take it for more than five days in a row. Acetaminophen is also known as paracetamol and is available on the market under many trade names, for example, Tempra, Tylenol, etc. In adults and children over 12 years of age, the usual dose is 325 to 650 milligrams every four to six hours, and in no case should more than four grams be taken in 24 hours. In children up to 12 years of age, the recommended dose is 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram of body weight every four to six hours, not to exceed 50 to 75 milligrams per kilogram in 24 hours. Acetaminophen doses shouldn't be given in excess of what's indicated since high levels can cause potentially lethal liver failure. Because acetaminophen is metabolized in the liver, daily doses 50% lower than those indicated above are recommended in patients who may be at risk of hepatotoxicity, such as those who consume alcoholic beverages or who are malnourished. Acetaminophen shouldn't be taken in case of allergy to it or in presence of severe liver failure. On the other hand, its side effects are very rare and include hepatotoxicity, hypoglycemia, and allergic dermatitis. The conclusions are the following. Both acetaminophen and aspirin act effectively against pain and fever. Acetaminophen, unlike aspirin, is not an antiplatelet agent and doesn't increase the risk of congenital malformations or contribute to premature closure of the fetal ductus arteriosus, making it a good drug for people with coagulation problems who have bleeding or who use anticoagulants, as well as for pregnant or lactating women. Acetaminophen can be indicated in all age groups. Instead, aspirin shouldn't be used in patients younger than 16 years with viral or bacterial infections. Compared with aspirin, whose side effects can include diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, acetaminophen in adequate doses has fewer adverse gastrointestinal effects and doesn't affect the kidneys. However, acetaminophen has minimal anti-inflammatory effect compared to aspirin, 
making it less effective than aspirin in reducing pain associated with inflammation and bodily injury. Also, aspirin is more effective than acetaminophen in controlling severe pain, for example, toothache. We conclude by saying that the combination of acetylsalicylic acid with acetaminophen is more effective than either of the two separately, and there are even commercial presentations in which caffeine is also added to increase the analgesic effect. In any case, the recommendation is that it's the treating physician who prescribes the best medication based on the particular characteristics of the patient. I hope this information is useful for you. To watch the Spanish version of this video, go to the description box and find a link. See you in the next video. Bye.